Hello everyone and welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie and oh, it is time to pull some eBay orders. Uh, had, had some more stuff sell today, of course, or actually yesterday. So let's get started. The first order is for Joe from the YouTube channel Jackpot Resale. Got to go pull Fat 24 for Joe. X-Men something or another. I think it's a... Uh, graphic novel fat it's gonna be up here fat 24 all right yep uh x-men prelude to onslaught 7.99 plus shipping on top thank you very much joe i appreciate it and good luck with your youtube channel jackpot resale all right this is something that i've had up for sale for a while this is a Chris Paul bobblehead from 2008-2009 season. Uh, man, he's so young there. He's an old guy now. Anyway, got $17.99 plus shipping on top for that. Sold a Cavewoman comic book. I may have forgotten the number already. I think it's CW39. Something about Pangean Sea or something. I hope this is it. Let me go back and look. If that is it, yeah, CW39, Pangean C episode. <laughs> and it does come with their certificate of authenticity, limited to 750 copies, $19.99 plus shipping on top. And finally, on that account, I've got Fat 20 going out. Nix, No Way Home. $7.99 plus shipping on top, I believe. Moving on to main store, main PC store, going to Sarah Shelf, and I'm looking for W2 right here. That is, I need to clean this stuff up a little bit. Sorry, y'all might be getting a little wind noise. I have, uh, have the air con, air conditioner rocking. All right, here we go. All right, so, uh, yeah, this box W2, it's a box of Witchblade comics. What kind of box do I have this in? Okay, medium flat rate. Mm. So, sold these. The shipping on these might be a little misleading. So, let me clear that up. I sold these for $64.99 plus $4 shipping. Uh, just because that's the way I wanted to do it. So, I guess sort of. The thing I was talking about yesterday, I guess in this one case, I baked shipping into the price a little bit because this is gonna cost me, um, what, 12 bucks or something to ship. So I'm guilty of baking it in. <laughs> but I had kind of a reason for that because uh, I was trying to do flat shipping four bucks on all comics. So, uh, but yeah, good sale though, nice bundle. Okay, same buyer and I don't know, his name is Frank. Uh, there's a lot of Franks in the world so I don't, think there's a problem giving that away but um frank if you are a viewer thank you very much and um i don't know i mean i just think it would be pretty i find usually when people you know, like somebody buys more than one item from me usually it's a viewer but they didn't say they were but uh frank also bought orphan black orphan black orphan black three seasons of this show and they're used uh the total on the three was 14.99 plus shipping on top and it never fails of course i tell you yesterday about how i i answered the question about you know why i do uh calculated versus free shipping and one of the reasons was uh whenever you put whenever you put stuff on sale you'll for sometimes you'll forget hey that's free shipping and you'll put the shipping on sale since it's baked in guess what happened here one of the few items that i have uh free shipping on and i put this on sale so this is 14.99 free ship and it's going to cost me 750 to ship so i probably will do a just a little better than break even on that so Kind of got stung, but on the other hand, I'm glad to be getting rid of it too. So it's not all bad. Okay, moving right along. I sold this, I think this is it anyways. I hope it is. 
pretty sure this is it. Well, it's a long box. Oh no, this is not it. That's an aircraft part. <laughs> oh man. Wheel bearings. Hmm. Uh oh, I may not know where the heck this thing is. Or it may take a little time for me to find it anyway. Hmm. Hmm. Uh oh. All right, the inventory says it's in this front bookshelf. Aha! It is in the front bookshelf. All right. This is it right here. Aqualung. Um, this is an Aqualung. Um, what do you call it? Aqualung depth depth dive gauge meter. I don't know what you call it. There it is, right there. Wrist. Uh, wear it on your wrist. I think I sold it untested. I'm not 100 percent though. Cindy bought four of these exfoliate things or something. Let's see. Here's a box labeled Exfo. I bet that's it. I'll open it up and make sure. But uh, you'll you see there on the screen Sunday rain something something exfoliate. So. Anyways, thank you very much, Cindy. I appreciate your business, and I hope you get exfoliated. Okay, Viking Season 1 box set, sealed. I think it's $8.99 it sold for. Look at this shelf. I mean, it used to be I couldn't hardly fit these things in here. And they are selling. Yeah, $8.99 shipping on top for that. All right, we're going to the Molly shelf for this. This Kenner Superpowers collect, collection case. And this is going out to a viewer name, and I'm, I've been practicing saying the name. I hope I get it right. Lionicio. I think that's right. So thank you very much, Lionicio. $29.99 plus shipping on top. And uh, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you enjoy. It's a nice case. All right, we're going to what shelf? Pop A shelf, I think. Sold a Samantha from Bewitched for $7.99 plus shipping on top. And this is going international. Let me see where it's going. What country is it going to? It's going to Eastburn, East Sussex. That's the UK, I believe. Lower Wellington. Yeah, it says UK. All right. The last thing that I'm pulling today is this sideshow collectibles wolverine statue it's got something on top of it you need to be careful of oh yeah that's that um that's that movie reel so i set that over here this oh, it doesn't have the original box or anything like that um it was on 40 percent off sale and I'm glad to sell it for $2.99. I had it priced up way higher than that before. So, yeah, number 372 of 1,000. All right, so I'm just gonna basically, I'm gonna, sh I think I packed it pretty well whenever I listed it. And by packing it pretty well, I put like some foam pieces in there to make it really not move. So now it's just gonna be a matter of, uh, wrapping some cardboard around this and getting it over to UPS. All right, I think I'm gonna use these. And when I say these, I mean this 14, 14, 12 box with flap up. Uh, the only problem is I don't have another one. So I'll get another, I'll buy a few more when I go out uh, to bring all this stuff to the post office. So this is interesting. I am pulling all these, um, these are cheap little like Burger King or Taco Bell uh, meal toys for episode one. I already listed some watches a minute ago, but this isn't the interesting part. The interesting part was I found these um, I found these Star Wars like cards here, and these are actually called Pay It Your Way with the Have It Your Way card. It says protect it as you would cash. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm guessing they don't have any money on them. 
but I'm gonna check. <laughs> I wanna know. Okay, so it says on the back, it gives a phone number and or it says go to bk.com, which I went to bk.com. And they have a place I could check a gift card balance right here, but they call it a BK Crown card balance. And it's been 15 years. So we'll see what it says. Please complete the task. I'm not a robot. Sorry, an error prevented performing a balance check. Well, that was anticlimactic. Uh, I called the phone number and it says to go to the website. I went to the website and whenever I put the numbers in, it says error. <laughs> so I emailed the support number for probably for some cards that don't have anything on them, but I'm still curious. Still curious. I'm also curious to see what they say. Sorry, it's too late. You can't check that anymore. Like it doesn't, I don't know what the terms are. It doesn't say it expires or gets charged. I mean, that was the dirty part about some cards back in the day. Um, you, I mean, it still might be the case. You buy the gift card and they would charge like a dollar a dollar every six months to the gift card or something just to make sure it's zeroed out at some point it's nighttime now and it's time to pull up some screenshots and some questions a screenshot screenshot <laughs> uh 13 questions from the last video so let's get through these uh first one gerald o'connell how do you get all those to the post office he's talking about the packages typically during the week uh, well, I use the big blue Ikea bags. Um, well, I have I have some unlisted inventory and some like that and that over there. Uh, the other, I have a couple in the uh, in the car right now too. But I load up everything in those, those Ikea bags and I carry them in. I can carry easily uh, two at a time and sometimes three. But like a lot of times on Mondays, uh, it'll take two trips, sometimes three trips <laughs> in and out. But I'm just dropping them off on the uh, on the empty counter and then I go back out and get more. But yeah, the uh, Ikea bags are perfect for transporting packages into the post office. Let's see. Uh, oh, this is from Kratos CSS. Hey, Lonnie, do you collect anything yourself or did you used to i sell stuff too but i still collect games greetings from belgium hello belgium so um yeah what i what i have recently started collecting is commodore computers in the box <laughs> and i have four of them so far this one right here commodore 16 i had never even heard of it and i saw um i saw mike from Shad Juice YouTube channel. I saw that he had found one and he posted it in one of the Facebook groups. I, I it was either RVA Flips or it might have still been it might have still been in our Facebook group when we still had it. But I saw him post it and I was like, okay, I want to have that computer because I didn't even know it existed. So he ended up cutting me a good deal on it. So thank you very much, Mike. But yeah, I have um a Commodore 16. Have a, and then the other three here I bought on eBay. I have a Commodore 64. And I got this one really pretty cheap. Um, I think I paid about 75 ish for it. I paid about 75 75 to, I think, one of these I paid 100 for. I can't remember which. But they're all in, like, great shape. They all work. They're all in the box. Most of them have the manuals. Um, I'm just a big fan of Commodore... 8-bit computers so and then I have a VIC-20 predecessor of the Commodore 64 and then I have a Commodore plus 4 all in the box and then I also have a C64 mini which is actually sitting right here on this table right now with the joystick it's got a bunch of uh, classic games loaded on it here 64 classic retro games included um, I mean, it even has basic. I haven't even fired the thing up yet. <laughs> I haven't made the time to play around with this stuff yet. But yeah, th that's what I'm collecting right now. Uh, there's two more pieces that I want to add to this collection, but I don't know if I ever will. Actually, three more. I want to get a, uh, a Commodore 128 
in the box. Those are super expensive. I mean, I doubt I'll ever get one of those. Uh, and I want to get a Commodore 64C in the box. And that's pretty pricey too. So I'm not sure I'll ever get those. Uh, they also make, this is a C64 Mini. And you know, it's, it's really cool looking, but it, most of this is for show. There's just like one board in here. These keys don't even work or anything. But they also make a, um, a C64 that is like the same size as the Commodore, the original Commodore 64, and the keys do work. Um, I don't think it's been released in the United States yet. So I want to get one of those eventually. I've seen it on the 8-Bit uh, the Guys channel. So anyway, that's what I collect. That's what I love is this stuff. And I need to put up some shelves. I'm thinking over there put up like a wall shelf to display them on. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. Deborah Sadler asked, so Lonnie, do you weigh the items up with, without box while you're listing or how do you do it? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. If it's, if it's media, media mail rates are so cheap that I'll typically just guess. I'll kind of, man, eh, that's probably a pound or two pounds or three pounds. And if I'm off, it's not a big deal. If I'm high or low, it's not a big deal either way. Uh, video games, I'll usually put them in at five or six ounces uh, just because I know, right? And then other stuff, um, if I do throw it, I'll throw it on the scale, like you say, and I'll just add some amount of weight for boxes. Like, I have a pretty good idea what boxes weigh. If I throw something on the scale and it's one pound, one pound, say eight ounces, then it's probably going to be two to three pounds because it's going to be depending on the size of the, uh, the size of the object, then, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to get all the box and packing in under eight ounces, but on other stuff, maybe you can. Uh, like if I'm going to pack something in a box like this, then this kind of box, I think, wait, I'm trying to remember what these weigh now. Kind of putting myself on the spot. I want to say they weigh maybe two ounces. Eh, I'll say two and a half ounces. I don't know. 0.16. What is that? 0.16 times 16. Yeah, it's probably a couple ounces. <laughs> I can't do the math in my head right now. But uh, yeah, I just guesstimate and i'm usually right so yeah and if if i put something over there and it weighs 13 ounces unless i'm going to put it in a um, bubble mailer or something like that there's a pretty good chance that's going to be a one to two pound kind of thing so it just comes with experience and shipping a lot of stuff or, or sometimes you'll say, well, I know I'll be able to get into one of these, right? And at that point, it's going to be a padded flat rate. But it just comes with experience and shipping a lot of stuff. And, you know, at first, if you're not sure, then take the extra time to weigh the box, weigh the bubble wrap, weigh the, pack, the paper or whatever you're going to put. Um, at first, I think you should weigh it all. All right, Kryptonite702. I have piano rolls I'm trying to sell on Let Go. And someone offered me a dollar each. Because he will use them for media mail. He will put a roll in each big order he gets. So the shipping cost is less. Thought on that. Okay, so uh, just because one portion... I, th I think it's crazy. because Just because one portion of the items in that package is media, it doesn't mean everything in the box can go media mail. Everything in that box or that package or that bubble mail or whatever... Everything in that package has to be media mail for it to um, comply with media mail rules. So, I mean, I, I see what you're saying there, but the guy's just wrong. That's not going to get him around it. I mean, he's still cheating. <laughs> he probably knows that. He probably doesn't care. Um, I don't really care either. I don't, I'm not the media mail police, but that doesn't get him off of paying like priority shipping. Okay, here's a question from Man Mountain Link. In a much earlier video, you said you had your eBay account set up to pass along the USPS discount to your buyers when using calculated shipping. Could you please explain how you did this? Okay, so this question is, how do you do it? 
The question is not, should you do it or not? Because I know some people don't like doing that. Um, so that's not what this is about. So I'm gonna show you exactly where it's at. Um, see where it says, hi Lonnie, I'm gonna go to account settings right here. And it's kind of buried, like some of this stuff. Then I go to site preferences. And there's probably an easier way to get there, okay? But this is how I'm doing it. And then, then you go down to shipping somewhere. Oh, shipping preferences. These have been moved to shipping preferences. Okay, so I'll click on that. All right, so now we're at managing shipping settings. And that setting is right here. Offer carrier specific discounts for buyers and you hit edit on that field and here's where offer ebay negotiated discount rates and then you could check or uncheck that usps discounted fedex discounted so there we go that's how i do it right there again i'm not saying you should do it or not i always have okay another question from tt pinman uh and it's a lot it's pretty it's pretty long, so I'll try and get to the question parts. But um, first, maybe it's just what you show in your videos, but you seem to have a large percentage of new sealed items. Not sure where you get so many like this. So I have a source where I've been buying a lot of collectible type stuff lately that is brand new, sealed. So that's where that stuff is coming from. He buys out collections. I buy stuff from him. And a lot of times it's brand new. So... That's where I get that. Now, other stuff that you'll see in these videos is obtained at estate sales or garage sales or like uh, in the case of, say, these things. Which I sold one, I shipped one today or yesterday. I can't remember. Um, but like I got this stuff at an auction. You know, but like this kind of brand new sealed stuff, this is not like the standard stuff I always used to sell. So... Yeah, I mean, that's that's just the result of making a good contact. And um, yeah, that's all that is, making a good contact. I do have a lot of used stuff too, though. Um, I used to sell nothing but pretty much like 100% garage sale type items. So, And you'll see once, once this whole C-word thing is over, uh, you'll start to see a lot more of that used kind of stuff come into my inventory. Question from Uncle Krog. When you have to print two labels for a few items like you did here, does it cost you extra or does the post office honor both labels? Yeah, anytime you have, anytime I have to print, like anytime I'm shipping multiple boxes, uh, I'm printing a separate label for each one and have to pay for each one separately. And Big Jake asks, what's the item you most regret buying? And what's the item that got away something you regret not buying? Uh, I can't really think of too many items that got away because I tend to buy everything. <laughs> I don't let items get away very often, at least not that I know of, not on purpose. So I don't have any regrets as far as like not buying stuff. Uh, right now on hand, I would say I kind of regret buying these because I'm not making a ton of money on them. So I'm not crazy about that. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff like that though that I regret. Um, another thing that I, like one of the bigger things that I regretted buying. I don't know how long you've been watching the channel, but um, I don't know six months ago or so. I still had them. The uh, I bought a bunch of beach balls and floaties from Dirt Cheap, and I think I paid like a buck a piece for them. I ended up paying like. 180 something dollars for 200 total pieces and i'm like okay well they aren't selling that great on ebay but if i make bundles then they'll do better and so i made bundles and man i mean they i tried selling them for probably about eight months or so including the summertime and it just didn't work out so uh, i ended up donating all that to goodwill <laughs> and I actually saw them in Goodwill. Hopefully they sold them all. I don't know if they did or not. Um, 
they might have ended up at like one of those weigh and pay things or something like that. But yeah, I don't I don't have a whole lot of regrets as far as this stuff is concerned. I look at it as either I make money or I learn something. That's the way I always look at it. Okay, another one from Uncle Krog. Lonnie, I thought you said you were not going to show us this part of your deals anymore, the pulling orders part. So glad you did not stop. Um, keeps me informed on what is selling and for approx prices. Maybe you meant you were going to stop doing them on the other channel. Real simple answer to that one. Changed my mind for a couple of reasons. But I try not to... I'm pretty hard-headed sometimes, but I try not to be too hard-headed. I try... I try to not like let pride get in my way whenever I do stuff and like reevaluate situations and change course if I need to. A quick one here for Colby, what size is your shed? 12 by 30 outside dimensions. Question from Nick Money, where do you get those plastic covers to cover center silver steel racks? I have the racks and have trouble with display on them. Those are what I need. Okay, I think you're talking about these things here. These are just like thin pieces of plastic. And in my case, they came with the shelves. So I don't know where to get them other than that. I bought all of my, uh, all those steel racks at Sam's Club for like 90 bucks a piece. All right, question from John Patrick Medella. Uh, watching, uh, let's see. Was wondering how you got into reselling or what inspired you. Okay, so I've been reselling on eBay. I think I made my first sale in like 1997 or something. And I would just go to like this little country auction maybe once every few months. And I'd buy a few things and I'd put them up for sale just for fun. It was like mostly going to be antiques or things like that. And then later on, I would go to the state surplus auction. This is years later. This is like probably the year 2000. And I would buy like pallets of surplus computers. And the pallets would have, they could have like 12 to 20 computers on them. Then I would check them out, test them out, make sure they worked, and then sell them. There was actually a decent market for that kind of stuff back then. I would get like a lot of Dell Optiplexes and stuff like that. One time I got a pallet of SGI Octane, um, which are like graphic, uh, graphic, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you call them. They're, um, they use them for like, spe they would use them for like special effects and things like that, uh, for like big Hollywood productions and whatnot. But, so anyway, I had a pretty good bit of experience like selling just for fun. So I knew how eBay worked. And then one day, Candace and I, my wife Candace and I, we were downtown. And there was a kid whose dad owned a record store down there. And he had a cart out on the sidewalk in front of the record store with a bunch of educational robots on it. And he had got them in a surplus kind of deal too. They're like robot arms and stuff. They're really cool. Some of them were like super expensive. So anyways, I bought all the robots. I think, I think I paid 175 for them. And I ended up selling all this stuff for right around two grand, 1700 to two grand. And I got the bug at that point. I was working for Apple and I hated the job. I was sick of it and I was miserable and I'm like, wow, I could just buy and sell stuff instead of doing this stupid job. So that encouraged me to do more of that, ditch the job and do what I'm doing now. That's how it all started right there. That influx of cash. And I took, like I, I didn't have to use that money that I made on anything else because it was just like extra money so I took that money and I went out and I found more stuff to buy more stuff to buy more stuff to buy and then eventually I quit my job <laughs> so and I quit it way too early too mind you but uh, yeah that that's what inspired me to start reselling full-time okay one more question from JR Sopko can you advise your thoughts on managed payments through eBay as opposed to PayPal which has been my standard for years. 
Okay, so I'm not the right person to ask about that, but the reason I took a screenshot of that question is because I have a question. Uh, those of you that use managed payments, if someone pays via, manage, via, via eBay managed payments, can they still do a chargeback like they can through PayPal? Because that's one of the, the downsides of using PayPal is uh, even if everything is done, you know, everything is cool, via eBay on you know as far as eBay is concerned people can go and do a chargeback or attempt to do a chargeback on PayPal uh, many many days later and that can become a problem sometimes sometimes the tracking information is no good at that point or whatever so my question to y'all would be those of you that use managed payments do you still have chargebacks there um, the only other thing I really know about managed payments, and I know that Justin at RVA Flips, he uses managed payments, so he would be better to ask. But I do know that there is a delay on the money, um, a day or two of it hitting your account. But I remember this past year, there was actually a significant problem with people getting money like it was taking them a week to get the money. Now that's been cleared up since, but those kind of uh, stories make me a little nervous, honestly. So, but yeah, I don't have any experience with it. I'm, I imagine we'll all be on it eventually. But uh, yeah, can you do chargebacks on uh, eBay managed payments? I haven't, I talked about going to eBay managed payments and then I read some stuff and I got scared off from it. So I'm probably not gonna switch until I have to. All right, guys, that is going to be it for tonight. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all again next time. Uh, oh, if you come across a boxed Commodore 128 or Commodore 64C, <laughs> let me know. Cut me a good deal. I'll probably buy it from you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.